Yo, I think YouTube needs some competition. This is a world. This is a world premiere. This is a world. So hey y'all, so this is gonna be a little bit of a mix of a rant and just a free flow. I don't know, it's been so long since I've had an opportunity to just talk to you all, but I just did a live stream yesterday, so that video is really long, that video is an hour, so I thought I would try to do something that was kinda on the shortish side, I don't know, well, we'll, we'll see what happens with this one. First, I wanna start out with just a little what's been going on in the world around us, or at least in the US and politics. A lot of people may have been concerned or following this attempt by Donald Trump and the Republicans to dismantle the Affordable Health Care Act, AKA Obamacare. That attempt failed, they didn't have the votes and eventually just pulled the bill. Paul Ryan was quoted saying, we're gonna be living with Obamacare for the foreseeable future. Also in the White House, I don't know if people have been following, but I myself am really uncomfortable with this investigation of the Trump White House and their connection to Russia, possibly some connection to some shenanigans that were going on with the election. There's also some connections to China. It, this seems to be one of those cases where it's probably not some just all-out conspiracy the way maybe the media is painting it or maybe the failure to divulge all of the information is leading people to believe, but there's certainly something that went on. It's probably something that was illegal and there are probably more heads that are going to roll because of it. I think it's something we should be keeping an eye on because if the will of United States citizens is being somehow undermined by some activity that's happening in the government, in collusion with other governments, then it's something that we should know and it should definitely be put a stop to. I don't think that this is something that we should just write off as, you know, not a big deal. In other news, Tommy Lahren has lost her job at The Blaze. If you haven't been following, Tommy Lahren is this media personality. She's definitely right wing. She does social commentary and she's usually tearing apart people who have a social justice perspective on the world. She trashed Beyonce's performance at the Super Bowl saying it was political and that she was somehow idealizing terrorist in the Black Panther Party. She trashed Colin Kaepernick for his peaceful protest when he did not stand for the national anthem. She hates Black Lives Matter with a vengeance. She appeared on the Trevor Noah show where she made some just completely unfounded, untrue statements about Black people. Anyway, she made a recent appearance on The View where she came out in support of a woman's right to choose, uh, basically saying that she was pro-choice. She did kind of refute it later, saying that she wasn't pro-choice, but that she didn't believe that the government should have a say in what women do with their bodies. Glenn Beck, who I believe is the producer of The Blaze, fired her. <laughs> So Tommy Lahren joins the ranks of these far right spokes folks biting the dust. She joins Milo Yiannopoulos who recently had to step down from his position at Breitbart and got a lot of flack from Republicans and conservatives for discussing the age of consent in a way that made it sound like he was condoning pedophilia. She joins the ranks of folks like Richard Spencer and the whole alt-right movement that was pretty much full-on denounced at CPAC as a leftist conspiracy to discredit conservatives. It just looks like the right who was maybe kind of getting themselves together and have seized power by getting Donald Trump into the White House is just starting to unravel. And I don't see it necessarily as a good thing. How can these individuals who are representing conservatives, representing Republicans, representing the right, be found guilty of these hypocrisies, be found guilty of lying, be involved in these scandals, show that they don't have the political clout to get done the things that they want to get done, and still have a huge segment of the American the United States population behind them. Even with only a 37% approval rating, that's still more than a third of the country that is willing to stand behind this administration, stand behind this president who have proved to be 
pretty incompetent and trusting that this is the person, these are the people who are going to do what's right for the country? I don't know, it makes me a little nervous. Things seem to be a little quiet in the land of vegan YouTube and I'm kind of enjoying the piece for a little while. Maybe it's just because I was unplugged for the last week because I had stuff going on here at Altspace. So if there's anything I missed, please do leave some info in the comment section below. What's the scoop, y'all? I do want to do a couple of shout outs. First, I want to shout out Karen at The Lost Lemurian. I think it's The Lost Lemurian. You made a video about the state of vegan YouTube and how there still are some folks out there with a positive message. You shouted me out. I'm really grateful for that. It wasn't like these huge channels shouting me out back when I was really first diving into producing content on a regular basis. It was channels that were not much bigger than my channel is right now. And these aren't huge channels. These are not even channels that are showing up on YouTube's radar, most likely, but it was the support from those minuscule channels that has led to my channel even being in any conversations. Since my channel is starting to grow, I feel like I can be engaged in the conversation and have a greater impact. Even without a lot of subscribers, it's nice to know that, you know, my name gets recognized by much larger YouTubers. It's nice to know that there are much larger YouTubers who are watching the channel from time to time and there's the potential to have a greater impact, so it's pretty cool. Every now and then I like to try to pay it forward by shouting out some vegan YouTubers or just other YouTubers that uh, maybe don't have the following right now, but definitely have a lot of great potential and certainly have made videos that have challenged my way of thinking and that I really appreciate. One of those channels is Emily DeCastreek, who makes a lot of videos mostly about feminism. Emily is just clearly a very smart person who brings a fresh perspective to a topic that a lot of people have spent a lot of time talking about. I also want to shout out a vegan called Quest, who I'd heard about from Vegan Sista about a month ago and hadn't thought to go and check out the channel. There were just a lot of things going on, but yesterday I spent a fair part of my morning checking out a vegan called Quest, you know, somebody else who's just bringing a nice fresh perspective to some of the conversations that are going on in the vegan YouTube community. Somebody that I definitely think you guys should go and check out. Check out Karen at The Lost Lemurian. Check out Emily de Castrique. Check out A Vegan Call Quest. And be sure to subscribe to their channels. Now, I made a video a couple of days ago where I was saying that, you know, people shouldn't be making a big deal about just the nature of this platform, YouTube. There's a lot of things that are problematic not just in terms of the platform itself, but what happens in social media, the way people can feel themselves suddenly being under attack, the way people feel like it's a little bit like the Wild West. But also talking about the way that YouTube has been demonetizing videos. I also talked about the fact that people feel like there's been a dip in the number of views that they've been having. Now, I don't want anyone to think that I don't see these things as problems, but also looking at it in perspective, YouTube is a free service that has been provided for years and years and years, and a lot of people have been able to carve out a living for themselves because of YouTube. But all good things do eventually come to an end. And so I think those of us who feel like it's gonna be on YouTube to keep this platform so that it is democratic, so that it is accessible to everyone, that's asking a lot. It's a business and it's gonna be operated as a business and things are ultimately gonna focus on the bottom line. And that sucks because of this restrictive mode a lot of LGBTQ plus channels are having a lot of their videos made invisible. That's happening to me, and I do see how it is very harmful. But again, we have to realize that this is a free service that has been provided for years and years and years. A lot of work has gone into developing and growing this platform, and ultimately, 
with its success, it's gonna get sold to the highest bidder and that bidder is gonna do with it what they will and there's just not gonna be a lot of things that we can do about it. Except, create a new platform. Let's not be ridiculous. There was a time when YouTube was a nothing little channel and it was a joke to even have videos posted on YouTube. There were many people who didn't believe that this platform would ever grow into anything. It happened because there were millions upon millions of people who threw themselves in and offered their support and posted their videos and were loyal. The same thing is going to happen on a Another platform. Eventually there's gonna be another place for people to have conversations, to post their ideas, to share the things that they love, to challenge the system. We can't be babies about it and cry because somebody is taking away our toys. We have to take some initiative and we have to take some responsibility for making sure that there is a space for all of the things that we love about YouTube to continue to happen, even if YouTube isn't that space. And if there is gonna be a fight to make sure a space like YouTube can remain equitable, then that space has to happen on a policy level and be much larger than simply YouTube. In other words, YouTube can't be forced to do things that no other business is being forced to do. If the expectation is that businesses have to make their services available to everyone in an equitable way, then we have to make sure that every business is required to make their services available to everyone in an equitable way. That's probably a bigger fight than most people are willing to have, and I understand that, but that's just the reality of the situation. I don't know, what do you think? That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto. Big guns.